are again at the Romford Horror Film Festival with the newly crowned recipient of what award was that again? Come on, um, best dildo death. <laughs> I mean, um, that's an award. I mean, it's an award. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an official award. He, he told me about it about two hours ago. Yeah, that was the first time I'd heard about that award, and then uh, I was like. That's 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 something. It's, yeah, I mean, it's probably the first dildo award I've won. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, I am sitting here with Kamal, and there's no point saying what film we've just saw, seen on the screen because you have literally had about six or seven different projects that you were involved with. Yeah, on yeah. on the screen. So tell us a little bit about the films we've been shown, what you're all involved with. I know Video Shop Tales of Terror. Um, Tales of Great War, uh, your film, The Haunting of Lady Jane. <sighs> How do you have time for all this? Um, well, it's what I love. Yeah. I'm born to do this. It's it's my passion. Being on, f- f- you know, being on film sets is it's what gets me up in the morning. Like I love uh, that creative process. Mm. Um, I love the collaboration of people. Um, and I'm just really lucky at the moment. It's going really, really well, and I'm really happy with how it's going. And I'm working with some amazing people on some really exciting projects. So, yeah, I mean, where yeah. do we go from there? So, um, do you want to talk about each one? So, on that, let's bounce back first. Let's bounce back a little bit because I'm interested to know. Yeah, you're a lucky guy, and yeah, you've been getting all these projects recently, and you're a very collaborative man. But where did it all begin for Kamal? Why did you get into filmmaking, what was it that made you want to do it? And why the hell would you do it? <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. I ask myself that every day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I was a very um, isolated and lonely kid. Uh, um, I found it quite awkward to kind of, you know, I was quite shy. I was, I was very, very shy as a kid. And there was one escape that I loved and that was cinema. It was film, I'd, I'd escape into film and just watch film after film and I felt like that was a safe safe uh, place to be and then I kind of found that when I started to make my own films because I actually started out as an actor so when I started to act in films it started to give me a lot more confidence Mm -hmm. and it kind of it broke that barrier that I had that I'd built up Um, you know this self-isolation that I'd built up and film just kind of gave me that Mm -hmm. that drive to just go out and do what it is I wanted to do and yeah, and it kind of stemmed from there. And I've been obsessed with film ever since I was a kid, ever since I was four or five years old. Awesome, awesome. I like that. And, um, and was there any particular film or actor, director, or anything that you saw on the screen and you were like, yes, it was your escape. It was the way to, to get away from the isolation and whatnot and, and escape into cinema. But was there any sort of particular project or film that you saw that made you think, that is exactly what I want to be doing and that's why I'm going to do it. See, that's a difficult one because I've wanted to be a filmmaker for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Literally, as long as I can remember. Maybe not necessarily film, but I know I wanted to tell stories and I thought I wanted to do that as an actor. But for me, I started off like obsessed with Bruce Lee. Yeah. That's actually how I started. I, I was massive into the martial arts genre. I still am. I still love martial arts genre. Um, but Bruce Lee was like my, my hero, my, my idol. And his films, I kind of, you know, it, it, and then I actually started watching his films and then I started to research about him as a person and realised the struggles that he went through mm-hmm. to get to where he was because he was the first Asian actor yeah. to really break that mould, you know, and, and be accepted as this big star, I thought. But he actually had to go back to his home country of Hong Kong, you know, and China to, to break that mould. So I found him really inspirational and that kind of his his life and his work pushed me to want to pursue film. So you're a massive martial arts fan. Yep. Bruce Lee inspires you. Mm-hmm. But you make dramas and horror. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they he inspired me, but I knew that yeah, me no, being a martial you. arts yeah. director really wasn't really wasn't my passion. It was it 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 kind of stemmed from wanting to make action films and then really it stemmed from wanting to tell compelling stories about the human condition. And I know that sounds a bit, you know, artsy-fartsy and and director-like, but essentially that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in broken people, broken vessels, and telling stories about those broken people and how they try to somehow find redemption, Mm -hmm. even though they might be completely broken. And that, I think, again, it stems from, you know, my childhood and, and my own 
because you know I've you know had various bouts where I've suffered with you know my, my own mental health issues and and struggle to really find my own place in the world mm -hmm. and I try to do that in film I, I, try, I want to explore characters that are going through through trauma but somehow manage to find a way to kind of deal with that and turn that around I like that and and, and especially over the last I mean I was going to say five or six years but it's been there forever we just never talked about it yeah but um it's it's a super important conversation to be having and how important is it for you that when you put that up on the screen and when you make those films that you get it right you make sure it's spot on it's vital it's vital when when I did my film Wastelands which really is yeah. my my story about mental health it, it was critical that I got it right and I, I love the research stage in, in film I could spend 10 15 years researching a project and I'd be happy yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hard part is actually making it <laughs> well yeah exactly, exactly. Um, for me read the research stage and finding an understanding you know a subject the subject that you're going to explore and compiling all this material is so exciting yeah. and I love that stage, but I really wanted to make sure. So I did that a lot for Wastelands. I really, really researched mental health. And obviously I knew it from an internal perspective, but I wanted to know from an external perspective, you know, yeah. because how mental health affects me is not the same way it affects exactly. somebody else. Everybody's journey is different. So I wanted to uh, really understand that process. And, and that's why I wanted to make a serious drama out of it and not turn the mental health crisis that the girl was going through in the story into into anything exploitative or anything that would in some in some way make it look um, bad on the person that was suffering from that but at the same time I didn't want to give any easy answers because mm. Wastelands doesn't give you any easy, easy answers. It doesn't give you any answers. No, it doesn't. It <laughs> no, really it's doesn't. Not no. Supposed to. no, it doesn't. No, and, know, and sometimes I, I feel like life doesn't give you any answers. Oh, you know, it's yeah. just a continuous journey. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that again, that's um, that's what I wanted to do is to, mental health is not something that can be cured. It's something that's a continuous journey and we learn to navigate it and we learn to mould it into who we are and deal with it. Brilliant. I really like that actually. It's it's something that um, everyone, not everybody, people struggle. They really do, and and I do myself a little bit as well. And and that's why when I see movies like Wastelands and and The Haunting of Lady Jane and some of the other movies we've had here that have dealt with those the, the uncanny that we showed, mm -hmm. um, they are so important. And it's even more important to get right. And with your movies, the, you seem to tow a really fine line of like. It could go a little bit absurd. It could go a little bit too far one way or the other. But you tow a fine line, very elegantly, and and I'm glad you do. And I just want to point that out. Thank you. Um, you are a DOP. I am. Yeah. You're an actor. Mm -hmm. You're a director. You, yeah. You sing the theme tune. You write the theme <laughs> tune. <laughs> What's your favourite aspect of filmmaking of all those things? Oh, that's such a difficult one. Um, I love it each each aspect I love for different reasons so acting I love sinking into a character and disappearing into a character if I have the opportunity to do that um, I love exploring characters from an emotional standpoint and how they get to that you know place yeah. I don't always get that opportunity to because sometimes the characters are absurd or, or funny or whatever that is um, directing for me is director for me is really good for my mental health because right. it allows me to control an environment which is an environment of my own creation and it allows me to and not that I'm, I'm the most controlling director I don't mean it in that way but I can control the story and the, and the way that that story goes so I love that aspect of directing DOP work I love collaborating yeah. I absolutely love collaborating with other directors because we've all got such different visions mm -hmm. and getting being able to kind of translate that vision onto the screen it's exciting it's so exciting and painting with light and and shadow and color palettes and composition you know and camera movement and all this stuff that we've you know these tricks that we can play with it's so exciting so i'm i love collaborating and i'm working with some amazing uh, filmmakers like michael fausti you know andrew El elias and you know just these incredible people that have got huge talent you know as filmmakers and i you know they allow me to come on board and tell their journeys and I, you know that that to me is great so i love collaboration um yeah what else do i do 
<laughs> everything, 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 yeah. everything. But yeah, I love I love every aspect. But if I if I had to choose, if someone put a gun to my head, it would probably be directing. Nice, nice. Last year you gave us Wastelands, which uh, really did well. Everybody loved that uh, on on the panel, and and the the guys in the cinema all loved that. This year we've got the Haunting of Lady Jane, a very very different yeah movie. Which mm-hmm. I was quite. <sighs> Sounds weird, but I was quite happy to see that you moved in a different way because I, I like to see directors that not only are progressing and leveling up, but like doing different things. Tell us a little bit about Haunting of Lady Jane and what that was for you and why you created that story. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love ghost stories. Yeah, I love ghost stories. And, you know, programs like A Ghost Story for Christmas and stories of M.R. James and Charles Dickens and Susan Hill. Mm. I love these type of writers and, and you know, Lawrence Gordon Clark, who created, uh, who di- sorry directed the uh, Ghost Stories for Christmas. I absolutely love those. You know, I watch them every Christmas. I, I I I just love the stories. So I wanted to tell something like that. I wanted to tell something that was a spooky, atmospheric ghost story, but also still had the elements of the stuff that I'm interested in yeah. in terms of family trauma and you know how we deal with issues you know that you're broken people that are trying to find redemption all of those kind of characteristics are in the lady jane but i also wanted to tell a really cool little spooky (laughs) ghost story story. Um, on a canal on a canal boat things (laughs) yeah but i mean everywhere we went the vistas were incredible because we were in shropshire you know we were skirting across the borders of wales and england constantly for two and a half weeks and it it was amazing everywhere we looked it was just just beautiful vistas but stress trying to shoot the film obviously so i just wanted to tell a really cool ghost story and and you know the story had been going around my head for a while i originally wrote a script with a friend of mine um and it had completely it had a slightly different story but that thread was the same and the first thread actually was apocalypse now the journey up river curse yeah. journey up river it, basically it was that journey up river that was the original thread of our idea and then I decided to turn it into a ghost story and I kind of took the script back to its bare bones and you know recreated that kind of ghost story elements the gothic horror elements that I wanted to create what 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 inspires you what what um what movies do you look to what sort of directors do you look to um when you're creating your projects and especially for Lady Jane what was what was inspiring you to get to those kind of gothic sort of vibe yeah, m- movies. Um, well, because Lady Jane is obviously it's, a, it's an amalgamation of two genres that I love, which is ghost story and folk horror. So visually, in terms of films, I relied heavily on films like Wicker Man and, and Blood and Satan's Claw and these brilliant films from the 70s that were just, you know, whenever you think of folk horror, these films come in. But I also love uh, the work of... Uh, uh, Wheatley, Ben Wheatley, ben Wheatley yeah. who yeah. did Kill List. Yeah. I absolutely, and you know, filled in England, and you know, um, just just these, just these incredible little folk tales that he's done. I think In Earth as well. Again, that's nah, just an incredible film. Like he, he's such an incredible filmmaker, it's, bit, it's quite like, inspirational to us. It's like taking the mundane and the normal and, and just blasting it yes, up and just exactly. Yeah. So they were a bit of an influence when I was um, kind of you know thinking about directing it how am I going to direct this film but also the liter- literature is really important I feel like sometimes we can get wrapped up with <laughs> there's a film crazy <laughs> film playing next door <laughs> it's like we're at a film festival um, yeah so I think sometimes as modern filmmakers we can get wrapped up in trying to represent films that we've seen previously yeah. but I think sometimes we lose something if we're not concentrating on story so literature is really important. So I was heavily influenced by the ghost stories of the past. Um, so I, I tried to, I tried my very best anyway to make sure that those gothic elements were in the story. But at the same time, don't heavily rely on it because I want to try and tell my own tale, yeah, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I want to dip back a little bit to something that you said before. And it's something that, um, obviously, I am from the north. I'm from north of the wall. I'm not from these parts. But when I come down here, this is the second time I've been down to the festival and, and met so many just awesome, talented filmmakers and everything. And you mentioned about how you're a, a prolific collaborator and part of all these different projects. How important do you think it actually is and how important is it for you that you all kind of stick together, build each other up, push projects forward and festivals like this? How important is that? 
massively important, hugely important. The, the I find, you know, in my you know humble opinion, I feel sometimes as filmmakers we're pitched against each other. Yes. Like there's this, you know, I need to be better than you or my film needs to be better than yours and I, I don't really subscribe to that mentality. For me, we're all we're all artists because for me film is art before it's commercial that's always the way i'm going to be that will never change i it it's a completely collaborative process so why if the process of filmmaking is collaborative why can't filmmakers collaborate yeah. Yeah. so for me filmmakers coming together to help each other make their films better because if if a filmmaker with so much experience comes on board to help me why would i scoff at that that's helping my film get better and i as a filmmaker and as an artist want to get better yeah. i want to impress uh, it, you know progress and impress yeah. <laughs> um, so in order to do that collaboration is the key in my opinion and at the moment we've got a great like uh Lars Singh who's kind of creating this kind of you know the curator yeah. who, as we've as, as we've named him is kind of bringing this pool of talent together yeah. and you know you've got these incredible people coming together actors crew directors writers that just want to help each other out and we're all getting on board each other's projects and pushing each other's projects it's it's awesome to see because a couple of years back five six ten years ago that would never be the case no and, but the thing is you know 20 30 years before that that was the case yeah and then it just sort of changed and then it's like like you say, there's a certain prestige to it. Like, this is my movie, you can't touch it, you're not allowed near it. Yeah. But now I'm seeing, especially in the UK, obviously I'm based in the UK, so I can't really speak for any other countries, but in the UK we have a fantastic, especially down here as well, and it's coming up north because you've got the likes of the Bashford Brothers and um, the Con uh, Craig Conway setting things up up there as well. Yeah, yeah. Just the collaboration right now in yeah. independent filmmaking is absolutely fantastic. It's yeah. a good time to be in there. Mm -hmm. And then um, you keep bringing back Natasha and you keep yep. bringing back Sean. And what is it about these two guys that you want to have in your movies? Well, for me, it's finding, you know, it, it, for me, it's finding talent that want to tell stories. Yeah and push themselves so finding acting talent that wants to you know rather than seeing themselves as just you know i just want to come and deliver some lines play a cool character and disappear these people are interested in stories and you know um sean is so multi-talented as an actor you know he has emotional range as an actor that he can go to and he's a great actor to work with um so i i was pleased to be able to bring him back for this one you know and um you know actually seeing him at romford was my favorite screening so far because i thought his performance was brilliant and it was really yeah, nuanced lady yeah in the lady jane and it it was i didn't notice some of the nuanced stuff because like, when you edit it for so long you get you know you get lost in the technicality and trying to tell the story and hitting the beats and i just some of the nuanced performances that you know he was giving in that film actually come across really really strongly and you know it's just i bring these people back because they're brilliant you know, why would you not want to work with people that are so talented? talented. And Natasha's fantastically talented. I met her for Wastelands and she came in and she just completely and utterly blew me out, blew me away with her with her skill as an actor. So I knew, what, you know, we, um, we wanted to work together again. So we did for this one. You know, I mean, you know, congratulations to her. She just had a baby, you know, so she's got now a family going, yeah. going on. So she might not be able to do projects for a little while, but that's fine because in the future, yeah. if the, chance ever comes again i'd work for a drop of a hat you know she's wonderful she, so she, she it's does, all about again collaboration she does seem to have this insane sort of intensity about her mm -hmm. like yeah even in sort of like the happier scenes as well like there's just something about her that like i love seeing her on screen so keep casting i keep using yeah that. <laughs> she'll be pleased <laughs> to hear that but but on that What's next for Kamal? What are you working on now? Is there anything you can talk about? Anything you can't talk about? With you? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of projects I can't talk about, but I can say that I'm I'm DOP in three features this year, a couple of short films. So, and it's for the the guys that I've mentioned. So we 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 are working on stuff. Michael faust has got a project that I've just DOP. We're just about coming to the end of it called Burnt Flowers, yeah. which is just a an inc it's going to be an incredible ride. I was that film. Talking to uh, Aviana a little bit earlier, and she was talking about that. And yeah, the guys keep telling me about Burnt Flowers. So it's yeah, it's an exciting little project, and you know, Faust is a talent. Him and Lou, you know, they're together. They're they're a talent talented pair, and I'm just lucky that I've kind of got 
kind of you know got in there with them and we're collaborating because I think we just make each other better mm -hmm. you know we bring the best out of each other and we're creating some great stuff and his burnt flowers is going to be great you know we've already got a lot of exciting stuff happening around that so you know watch your space with that oh, with that one definitely. We, we will be keeping the light um so yeah there's there's obviously that there's another project that we're developing together me and michael and then me and andrew from chow handy uh productions we're also developing a project we're obviously always talking to lal we've got projects going on i'm directing a, uh, a segment for video shop tales of terror 2 nice, nice which is a kind of ken russell inspired devils inspired kind of thing called the serpent's tongue awesome so yeah i mean there's loads going on i've got my own director uh, directing job coming up next year which i'm going to be directing my next film next year so there's loads going on loads loads well loads. you've been doing like a, about 10 different projects a year right now so <laughs> i expect you're gonna keep going and uh, yeah it's good yeah. to see and i'm happy to see it and, and i'm glad that you gave us a chance to to show some of the work up here Thank and you. and the other guys as well gave us a chance to show their work um, one thing I like to, and you've kind of already mentioned this, but um, one thing I like to end on, and if you could expand a little bit more, is that filmmakers, uh, directors, actors, creative producers, whenever you ask them about their movies that they watch up on the screen, they'll tell you everything that's wrong with it. Because mm. hypercritical, of course you are, tortured yeah. artist and everything mm. like that, but um, what's the one thing when you were sat watching The Haunting of Lady Jane that you saw up on the screen and you thought we smashed it that day that's an awesome performance yeah oh, that's oh an awesome uh, yeah 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 um there's actually quite a few in lady jane bits that i'm really happy with um i think overall we got the tone really really right mm. on the film i think the tone is really good and i think it does really sit nicely within that ghost story element in terms of what particular bits i'm happy with i love um I love the family stuff in the film. So the, the flashbacks that tell Lily's story and her trauma with her family, the actors that I had um, on that, um, which were, you know, Rosalind Stockwell, Roseanne Priest, Andrew Fett, these guys were just incredible to work with. Like I was humble to, to work with them because they're to acting talent. It makes your job easy. It makes my job very easy, <laughs> ex extremely easy. And they, you know, and they were very invested in the characters and they were invested in the story. And, and they and that was, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Camden was crazy. Shooting in Camden was crazy. Uh, and the characters you see in Camden just make a film. You know, yeah. you could just literally just go around filming the characters in Camden. You got a film right there. So that was that was also really uh, great. There was one day when we were shooting on the boats where I think we worked, I think it was 19 hours, um, or like in one day on while we were on the boats. And I was proud of the stuff that we shot, mm -hmm. especially considering the tight, you know, the amount of time we were working and the dedication of the cast and crew to kind of keep going even though in their heads they probably wanted to throw me in the water <laughs> but they carried on yeah. because they're professional and they wanted to get the job done so you know there was that particular day that i really am proud of and thankful for because you know people went that extra mile for me and my project you know That's so awesome. that means a lot it's loads <laughs> really is i'm actually quite happy with lady jane i think it's i think it's a good it uh, well. I'm, you know I'm, I'm happy with what we managed to achieve i mean i bit well. off more than i could chew but that's what we do as filmmakers <laughs> yeah well yeah yeah it's, if, if it's a uh, if, you're, if you're not learning it's that old thing uh, footballers yeah. always say like if it's not raining it's not training you know yeah. It's, yeah. you've got to, you've got to test yourself you've got to push yourself yeah and then um, i mean i watched some of lady jane up on the screen obviously i had a couple other things to do and all that but it looked fantastic up there it looked yeah. great so Good. Plus, I've watched it like two or three times anyway. So thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. But, but no, um, I just want to say again, um, thank you for submitting the movie. Thank you for letting thank us. Thank you for it. having us. Seriously, thank you for having it's us. It's always good to to see you guys coming back each year. Like, I've only been here twice now, but I've been doing the selection thing for like the last three or four years, and it's always good to see the same names coming up and mm. sort of every time, like, oh, they just keep getting better. And I love that. I love that. Oh, that's that's really nice. Keep doing the great work that you guys are doing because well, 
you know, I without say it's great work, but <laughs> without I mean, without somewhere to screen, you know, without you know, you guys are giving us an audience. You yeah. guys are giving us that opportunity to to speak to people and 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 you know, speak to people about our work. So that's always that, that is also one of my favorite things. Like when you when you're walking around during the day and all that, and there's like ten or ten or eleven different filmmakers all sitting at a table, just sitting <coughs> back and then it's like, yeah, something good's gonna come out of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, a lot already has at a Rotary exactly. Film Festival. So. Exactly. So what I want you to do, come on, we're going to wrap that up there, but what I want you to do first is to uh, let people know who are watching or listening, where they can see more of your work, where they can find you on social media and everything like that. Yep. Just a couple of minutes to, to, to pimp yourself. Yeah, well, um, if anyone is interested in looking at my stuff, uh, it's always under Chemical Film, which is spelled with a K, K-E-M-I-K-A-L, um, which if you Google it on um, Instagram, Twitter... Facebook, it'll all come up under chemical film. So that's it, if you're interested. <laughs> Everyone will be interested, of course, they will. And I'll, I'll be tagging everything when I put things out and everything like that. So don't worry about that. You'll find it nice and easy. But again, Kamal, thank you so much for doing this. Thank, thank you. you I really coming. appreciate it's, it. It's great to see you again. Yeah, nice seeing you too. Thank yeah. you very much. Look forward to the next time. And I'm glad we didn't have any dirty feet in this one. <laughs> <laughs> and that award, by the way, is well deserved. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>